Rural Heritage on RFD TV is brought to you by Rural Heritage Magazine, a bi monthly magazine featuring articles about farming and logging with draft animal power, small scale diversified family farming and homesteading, and other aspects of our rich rural heritage. Rural Heritage Magazine, borrowing from yesterday to do the work of today. For subscription information, please call 319 362 3027 or order online at www.ruralheritage.com. I'll tell you, it, uh, nothing else, you gain a tremendous respect for our pioneers. You talk about some tough people. It makes you realize what sissies we are. Uh, we'll take as many wagons as we can get. The Forest Service limits us to 200 people okay. on our permit. So we quit taking registrations at 195 this year. And is it about uh, two-thirds saddle horses and one-third wagons, something like that? We had 21 wagons registered this year. More years than not, this is our typical weather. We have had some days when it's uncomfortably hot and we've had some days when we get wet, but this is typical, comfortable. Well, the first one I ever did with the Roundup was on blacktop solely. And was that one of the first ones in general? It was probably about the fifth year. Okay. My parents were invited on the first one, and it wasn't too far out of Pendleton. Uh, and they ended up in Pendleton on July 4th in a parade. Hmm and it rained the whole time they were out. Wow. So, yeah. That's kind of rare, isn't it? Ah, uh, yes, yes. This time of year to get rain? And, and nobody was ever really equipped for it. Uh, they talked about being soaked to the skin, you know, for the four or five days they were doing. Kind of make it. Yes. And the first ones, of course, was back in, what's 40 years? 81, 81. Yeah. Um, there weren't the number of motorhomes back then that there are today, and so there were very few. They moved camp every night, every day. The wagon, the Teamsters moved quite a bit of the people's duffel. What wouldn't fit in a wagon, they put on the hay truck or whatever else was going along with them. And, uh, you know, you didn't have to have such a big area for camp trailers and uh, the like. Yeah. Water uh, was out of the creek. But today with the showers and the whole nine yards, you got to have water a little more accessible. They've always had a caterer with them. The first one probably did it um, 30, 34 years, I would guess, before they changed caterers. He got fairly proficient at it and had a big refrigerator truck and a shower truck and a wash truck and wow. kitchen and yeah.
these are a pair of uh, six and eight year old blue roans. The mare on the left side is Pertron. The gilding over here is Pertron Belgian Cross. I have a full brother to him at home, but he's black. We plow with them in the spring of the year, all three of them abreast. And then for teams, we match them anyway. Whoever wants to be, whoever's caught first that day. If you enjoy seeing how our ancestors lived during America's rule yesterday, you're going to love looking at these books. Volume 1 is fieldwork showing horses and vintage tractors preparing seed beds, planting, cultivating, and harvesting the crop. Volume 2 shows the work being done in the barn and farmyard, feeding and watering the livestock, getting the crop into the barn, milking the cows, shearing the sheep, and collecting the eggs. In Volume 3, we go inside the home to see the family in the kitchen canning vegetables, in the parlor listening to the radio, and in the dining room for family supper. We also head into town to shop at the general store or visit on the town square on Saturday night. Each book has over 140 large format pages. They sell for $24.95 each, or you can buy two for $44.95, or all three for $54.95 plus shipping. Call 1-877-647-2452 to order. That's 1-877-647-2452. So as president, is one of your jobs trying to keep people happy? Yes. <laughs> a little bit of a cheerleader maybe? or A little bit of a cheerleader, smooth some ruffled feathers. Complaints department. Complaints. Cancer, yeah. yeah. But mostly, you know, we can smooth everything over, you know. A lot of it is when they're just hot and tired and grumpy. Or, yeah. For this many people, there's not much that has happened. Right. Yeah. They all understand. Um, we had our horseshoer that's up here come up and tell us that, you know, everybody just needs to have a good time. When you're hot and tired, something happens, just join the Oh Well Club and just say, Oh Well. <laughs> so that's been kind of our motto this year. That's really good yeah. advice. Yeah. And walk away. <laughs> so do you have a farrier here all the time? We do, Don't yes. Make yeah. Is he or she on the wagon train or it's, still he, up at camp? He, oh, he's in, a, he rides every day. Okay. And he's probably riding drag for us. We have, you'll notice that we have a, a out, the scouts ahead of us, and then we have a, 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 a sweep. Yes, sweep. We call him drag, ride and drag. Okay. Then we have someone that rides drag for the horseback riders as well, so we get the gate shut. Sure, okay. Yeah. So like well. yesterday, you would have had to have opened and closed the gate. Right, yes. So it's pretty, and those are volunteers that just show up, that they are part of our committee. Okay. So they paid to come and work too. Yep. Okay. <laughs> well, I just can't say enough about our participants. We have some amazing people from all walks of life. We've had people come from uh, England that couldn't come, and Canada, and Australia, Pennsylvania, someone from Pennsylvania is here. So the overseas people, because of COVID, they couldn't travel. They couldn't right. come, right. yeah. And we miss them. Definitely. Sure. So one of the other things that I think people probably might not think about is some of the contingency plans you have to come up with in case of, God forbid, there should be a weather problem or a fire or whatever, or somebody cutting their hand or something. Yes. So we have an EMT here who also paid to come up here who has been running around. Um, we have to redo routes a lot of times because of, you know, depends on who we have. Maybe someone's not capable of handling one of them for their wagon or their stock. Um, we've been weathered out before and kind of hunkered down. We've also been, some of us are diehards that go out in the weather. Sure. We've had hailstorms, you know, make us cut our plans short. And uh, we haven't had problems with a wildfire yet, but we just, we, we have a uh, radio, we have a ham team. I don't know if you knew that or not. Yeah, I, I, okay. I did get it on tape, but yeah, I, I heard that. Yeah, we have a ham team that is monitoring it every, the whole time we're out on the train, so they can get a hold of somebody. I'm also a member of the Forest Service, and I can call in for our dispatchers who are very well versed in emergencies. They know where we're at. Um, yeah, so.
Another thing that Roundup does is they're doing horse-drawn tours of the every Saturday of uh, the Roundup grounds and have a narrator give the history. Oh, so they just started that this year. We have somebody that does the narration, that, and I've learned a lot. I've been around sure. a long time. Give the history, you know, back from when it started, and uh, it, it, it's been a lot of fun. And Happy Canyon, we go through Happy Canyon, which is a night pageant that happens every night after Roundup. So is Roundup uh, more than a rodeo? It, it is a rodeo, right? It is a rodeo. It's also, we're very closely affiliated with the Native Americans. Okay. And they have a big teepee village and camp out. One of the biggest encampments, I think, around. Is it several nations? Yes. Okay. Mostly the confederated tribes, Okay. I think. We have uh, the Indian dance in the middle of the rodeo and the chiefs come out. And yeah, it's, we celebrate our partnership with the Native Americans. That's great. And then at night, there is the pageant, the Happy Canyon pageant, and it involves clear from when the Indians were, you know, on the, in their natural state, and then Lewis and Clark coming in, and then, you know, the uh, settlers coming in, the gold miners, and then, the, you know, kind of the sad part where they're leaving. Right. And then it turns into a slapstick kind of a uh, old time, bunch of skits, you know, like that you, vaudeville. yeah, vaudeville uh -huh. kind of thing with the, and then at the very end, they have a uh, Indian in full regalia, bareback with just the rope around in the yeah, mouth, right. with the flag go up and the, have the clothes of the, and it, it makes you get a lump in your toes. So yeah. It, it's so beautiful. We do have accidents every once in a while. You can't have a wagon train without an accident here and there. And we have a great crew that just pitches in. I actually went off a hill with this wagon when a bit broke. And I thought I was gonna to get a tow truck to get it out because it rolled down the hill a little ways. And uh, I had five guys, smart guys, but my friends, and they figured out a way and got it up and out. And here it is today. That's very cool. <laughs> yeah, that's very cool. Hi, I'm Joe Mishka of Rural Heritage Magazine. I'm on location of one of the many events we cover that celebrates our rural heritage. If you enjoy our show, check out our magazine, where you'll learn more about the people that blend the past with what works today. You can save almost 20% off the newsstand price by subscribing at ruralheritage.com or chat with us at 877-647-2452. That's toll free, 877-647-2452. This is Hope and Tuck, um, they're half, because it's the same dad on all seven horses that we've got. Um, they're eight years old. They were broke as two-year-olds together, and they've been together all their working career. So six years they've been working together. He's a, we try to use him, these two as leaders in our outfit. She. She's just not bold enough. Um, I believe he would do it if he had another mate, you know, that was at least go ahead like him. Um, and she does a pretty good job, but she she's not what she should be. You mean leaders like in a six up or a yeah, four up or six something? Up, yeah, yeah, okay. Yeah. Uh -huh. um, we go to Pendleton Parade with three abreast, uh -huh. six, three, and three, and yep. it's like the herd going down the road, and they're sure. very happy with that. What do you put? What do you put them to? Um, it's a Pendleton Roundup's uh, wagons, and there are two bulk wheat wagons tied together. Oh, cool. Um, uh, my dad started breeding these horses in 1960, and we've kept, I've had a team all my life, and we've kept it going, and I just wanted to give my nieces and nephews the same opportunity my dad gave me. And what they do with that um, is up to them. But sure. they're, they're into the family legacy. And they know it's an important deal. Because once these are gone, they're gone. You're not going to go find them. And I had a guy contact me. He said, you know, I had a really nice pair of shires that looked like yours. And he said, I got rid of them. And I'd like to get back in them again. And I thought, I'll bet you do. <laughs> so, but I don't, I, I haven't sold any of mine. 
my goal is to get a six up put together again like like dad had I haven't got that done yet got the horses but just don't have a leader to really get get it going so in a way this kind of a shire horse is kind of in danger in a way well you know over in england they say the shire horse is an endangered an endangered breed and um, we have friends that live in, in England, and my sister and I went over there two years ago, and I told John, you know, find me find me a, a nice Shire stud. He said, there aren't any over here. Yeah. And, and he's he's got a bed and breakfast. He does all of his farming with Shires. He breaks a lot of horses for other people. He knows where they are, and he says, right. they're just your kind of horses. They're not here. So, and I don't know. There's a lot of people that... You know, wouldn't give you a nickel for these. They're too small. They they don't like them. Your dad worked them in the field. My dad worked them in the field. When I was a kid, uh, uh, growing up, I know we had just grade horses that dad worked in the field. Um, you know, corn, planting corn, uh, hoeing corn, or weeding corn. Uh, we mowed hay with them, we raked hay with them, we plowed with them. So we have a whip generally to keep them from backing up when we're stopped. I rarely right. use it going forward. Right. But if you put them in the field, would they slow down on a oh, yeah. cultivator or yep. a plow? Oh yeah. Well, I, I raked some hay with them uh, just last week and they're just... Okay. You wouldn't even think they were the same team. Yeah. Nice and quiet. I mean... Right. You know what? It's, it's just environment. When you change their environment, they're enjoying themselves. And you can tell they're enjoying themselves. <laughs> well, I'll tell you what. They don't go camp back to camp and 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 lay down and sleep. They they could go another 20 miles yeah. without any issue. Yeah. Yeah. I'm sorry. It. I, but the driver can't.
Thanks for joining us today at Rural Heritage and RFD TV, where we borrow from yesterday to do the work of today. This program is available for purchase. To order your copy, please call 319-362-3027 or visit www.ruralheritage.com. Rural Heritage is a bi-monthly magazine dedicated to draft animal farming and logging as well as other aspects of our rich rural heritage. It is published by Mishka Press, which also offers a complete line of back-to-the-land books, DVDs, and calendars. Call or write for a catalog or subscription information. Or visit our website at www.ruralheritage.com.